He's looking. He's looking. He's not looking. God damn it. Well, it's kind of warmed up a little bit. We've had some really ugly weather. We got about a foot of snow, which is going away now. And we decided to kind of kick it old school, run up a little higher up on the river, and fish bait to see if we can find some dry fly fishing. Uh, I brought a streamer rod just in case, but it should be a pretty good day. It's a little bit bright. Betas don't like they don't like that sun stuff so much, but uh, gonna go up, gonna try some new stuff out. I got some new, <laughs> I got new wading boots for the first time in about, I have no idea. It's gotta be 10 years at least. Uh, so, but I got the Dark Horse Corkers, which I've always been a fan of that company, that interchangeable soul thing. I just, it's, it is so, it's so good to have, and especially out here where you got places like the park where you can't fish felt you don't need felt in the park anyway but uh, you know and in this river which is just a snotty bouldery you know fall down all day type place the rock bars are what I, I prefer you know there's all kinds of soles you can put on whatever you like but pretty exciting because I uh, I don't know mine were so shot it was I can't believe my toes didn't stick out of them but these things are pretty cool. Got a new fanny pack if I go streamer fishing. Uh, I'm gonna, I had, a, I had a lot of trouble getting that thing going. I, you know, like I said, my boots were 10 or 15 years old. My fanny pack was uh, at least 10 years old. <laughs> it was a disaster, so I don't know, I get stuck on stuff. As you'll see when we start dry fly fishing, because like I said, I'm going to be doing what I would normally do, which is I'll be fishing a 1972 Fenwick Fenglass with a Fluger Medalist, which my companies that I work for probably don't dig it, but it's what I like to do with my dry, especially on these little tiny dry flies. I love glass rod. I don't, I'm not a distance guy. I like to stalk up and fish, and so uh, I just felt like kicking it old school anyway, so uh, we're going to go up here, see if there's, it's what is it, 1040, it's 40 degrees, it's one of the warmest days we've had in two weeks, and so see if we can get us a little bit cloudy, supposed to, supposed to clear out, which is bad for betas, we're just, but if you, you know, sometimes they'll hold into the sun, but it's a little bit cloudy, and all it takes with those things, I mean, if they're getting ready to hatch, just a cloud cover, it can, it can literally be a three minute cloud come over and bugs will hatch, and then it'll come, sun will come up, they're done. And so, we should go up and see if we can find them. Braden was up the other night and said there were there day and said there was a bunch of fish up. So, I'm gonna go up and just try to throw something different today. I mean, it's, it's November like uh, second or third or something. I don't know what it is. And so, obviously, most people want to be out throwing meat, but we do that a lot. And I really love dry fly fishing, so I decided to just change it up. We'll see how it works out. Thank you. You're gonna road hunt, road hunt lately. New boots. Very exciting day. Very exciting. Like I said, we're going old school. New boots, really old vest. <laughs> this vest, I think it, this thing has been around for, I'm still a vest guy, I love these things. This rod, was my dad's, this is a 1970, early 70s sometime, I don't know when it was, showed me two, three, four, five, I don't know. The Fluger's, I don't know how old that thing is. It's soft. 
I love it. So we're going to walk downstream here. We're going to hit, we're going to go down to some flats to see if we can find some fish that have heads up. And if it doesn't work, we're going to come back. You can see it's a little colder up here. Uh, it's a different world up high here. It's, you know, we're at the top of the Madison. And so to hold this is just a whole different world. If we were down by Annis right now, it'd be 50 degrees and there's no snow. So we're letting the water, you know, it's coming out of a dam here, so it's pretty consistent temperatures. That's not gonna be a big deal, but we're just letting it warm up a little bit and see if we can hit an hour or two of a dry fly. See what happens. Have coffee. I'm going to put a drop around here. There's fish working out there. They just started. And we got here just as they were starting to come up. Uh, and, you know, I, just, I don't really know what's up, the, up down there. I don't know if it's betas. I don't know if it's midges. Whenever you fish midges, and anytime you fish the fall in the west, you bring midges with you too. <clears throat> Both your, your larva and your adult, even though you, you know, every day you get here and it's just betas, 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 and all of a sudden, boom, you can't buy one, it, they're on midges. And so I'm gonna put on a little, I'm just gonna put a little emergent betas on, and I'm gonna do a dropper. Everybody does this different, but when I'm running 18s and 20s, I don't like to put my dropper below my uh, adult. Actually, I'm going to go down and I'm going to look first. Just, I'm not sure what's, there's enough heads up that if I, uh, I should be able to see an adult, but I'm just going to put this CDC emerger on above it, kind of a cross dresser. It can be a betis, can be a, <clears throat> it could be a lot of things. It could be a trike. It could be a, it's very tubular. There's not much to it. So it's, there's no legs. There's a little tail. It could even be a midge, I suppose. It's just, very generic and then when i get down there so I, I just put this you know a lot of people and and again if i'm using bigger flies in particular i don't really mind doing the the fly off the bend of the hook so much but i'm in slick water i put it above it i don't want the tail when if they're going to come up and eat the dry fly i don't like to have another piece hanging off of it and trying to sink my fly so this way, this will be up here, it'll be sinking. I can track that. I know it's above, you know, my fly will be upstream of it. <clears throat> and I can track that, and it, you know, it doesn't take you long. The first fish you catch tells you exactly which ones they're on, if they're gonna be on the, the uh, emergent or they're on the adults. I don't see any adults yet, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk down around. There's some pretty, I saw a pretty nice fish just rise off that point. So I'm gonna walk around, set myself up, as you've heard me say a thousand times, I do not like long distance casting. And if you, there's ever a spot like right here, it's so easy, it's slick. But what you tend to do, you cast too long, you end up crossing fish that you don't see. And this is, this could be a three hour window of fish right here. And so I'm not gonna try to put, I'm gonna go to the bottom. I'm gonna stalk up as close as I can, identify the biggest heads I can. I wanna decide, I wanna watch my fish. When you walk up, you should be looking to see if that fish is consistently feeding to the right or to the left. Is it going straight up? If it's going straight up and you come from behind it and you lay your line over top of its head, first he's gonna to touch your leader when it comes up to eat, which is no bueno, he's gone. As soon as he feels that leader, he'll bolt out, especially in tacky water. I mean, you get on Henry's Fork type water, you better learn to read that head if it's going this way or that way. You can hook a cast, you can loot, you know, put a little curve to it, or you can get off to the side so you know that you're coming, your leader's not gonna go right over that fish's head. I'd rather go out, find a fish, 
you know, stalk it, catch it, and then just throw the damn thing out here blind and hope something eats it. I mean, I got 20 fish feeding right now. I could just sit here and throw and probably catch some. I'm gonna go down, stock up, find a fish, and then I'm gonna try to isolate it, try to read it to see which way he's coming, left, right, straight up. I position myself, make the cast, and hopefully get the fish. We'll see what happens. If, I mean, it really doesn't, it's like I said, coming in, it's one of the prettiest places on earth, so uh, it's not too bad of a briar patch to get thrown into to fish. So I'm gonna head down there and see what we can do. If that big one feeds again, I'll wait out to him. That was a big one. Oh, there's a good one. See him? I see that fish. That's, you know, not a big fish, but he's, he's a little bit higher in the column. It could be the one I moved up. I could have pushed him up. He's looking like he wants to lick his head up. Now you should be able to see him really easy. I mean, he's a little guy. 12, 14 inches maybe. Now see his head, see his tip in his head up. He's looking, I can't cast to him from here. I'd put him down a second, but I was trying to get up above there, but. I'm certain if I try to, I'll see if I can get him to go on the, uh, I would assume that he's going to go down the second I cast to him. Now, I, I went this side of that fish about two feet. It's moving on me a little bit. I want to see, you can see that CDC puff there. Oh, now he came this side of me. I want to see if he'll look at that, like was he, if he was even a little bit remotely interested in it. So they're obviously bait is hatching now, and there's a few midges also, Ooh, stuck in the mud. But the betas that came up, there's one floating right down at me. His wings are straight up. The one that I watched hatch, wings were, there's one just going down on the water. <clears throat> okay. So this, this is what we're dealing with right here. And when he, when he hit the water, he went completely spent. Now he's an adult, right? It's a dun. And so his wing is up. But when he hit the water, he went into a complete spinner looking bug, and then he popped up with his wings. The one I just watched hatch laid, he was completely spent, looked like a complete spinner. And then, so I put on a fly, it's, a, it's called a found link. It's both a spinner and an adult. So this one has both spinner and it's got flat wings like a spinner, and it's got a short little wing up so I can track it. I just watched that fish eat a nymph. Pretty calm. Little tiny guy. We'll take him if he'll eat. So you can see he's getting over here. He's kind of edging. I'm not getting a look at the adult though. So I can see that fly pretty well. And I'm just, there's two fish up there. They'll feed a bit. Now they, they're back in the grass and they're, there's just not enough bugs yet for them to get up and go. That's a good rainbow. Still really low though. I got half a notion to wade out into this flat. <laughs> See if my zipper works. <laughs> Should hit this flat sooner or later. Ooh. Not exactly what we'd planned for to be walking the lake. <laughs> Wrong ride for this.
I don't like my bugs. God damn it. <laughs> there was one over there in this a minute ago that was pretty big. God damn it. You ate that just as pretty as you please. There's, I'm trying to find, there's one, I've seen him three or four times and he's, he's got me out in the middle of this lake. I mean, it's really a little bit out of range for what I've got here for a rod. My idea was that I'd fish really close to shore today. I have lots of little short casts, not standing out in the middle of a lake, but it's exciting. So there's one right just in front of me. Trying to get that one. God dang it. Did exactly what he was supposed to. I haven't felt any of them. So as much as I do all that, the streamer thing, and I nymph fish a lot, to me, there's absolutely, this, to me, this is real fly fishing. Not that they all aren't real, and not that, I'm not saying, obviously, I love them all, but uh, to me, this is the ultimate right here. Sitting, trying to see a bug. This is the ultimate deal right here, you know. Stocking up on these fish, I'm letting them feed above me. I got three fish kind of, one's feeding pretty consistent. He's, he's now not lifting his head up, so he's eating the mergers underneath the water. Uh, not even in the film, he's not, he's not breaking the surface. You can, get, you can get faked out, just as I said it, one smucked right in front of me, meaning he left a bubble. He sucked water in and he, he, he made a bubble on the surface. So those, oh, he's right in front of me. It's a, he's, this fish is now a rod length away from me in this sand flat. This is, this is just, I wish you could see this. If, he, if Braden stands up, you won't see it. But I'm looking at this fish. It is suspended six inches off the bottom. And he's tipping to the side and he's eating nymphs. He's floating down. He's literally going to float right in front of me. This is the coolest part of fishing in the world. I mean, it's, it, this is just spectacular. And he's, he's low, which, and I, he was the one that was feeding up there, I'm pretty certain. Really, it's a colored up fish. He, uh, <clears throat> I think he wants to come over and look at my boots. He's, he's literally under my rod tip right now. And it's, it's interesting because I have so many fish up there with their heads right under the surface of the water. And this fish is two foot down and he's actively nymphing. I'm not going to nymph them. I'm going to, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to fish to the fish that are putting their heads up. That's why I came down. But this takes me back. I mean, oh sh oh, there's two of them. There's a big brown just swimming. <laughs> there's another big brown. This is probably a pre-spawn pair. My guess is the other, the male, just moved. It looks kind of looks like two males. I don't. Maybe not a spawning pair, but I can't tell on the little one. The other one just moved over. That's a 18 inch fish. Both fish are really low. And a lot of times if you sit and watch, you'll see them just work their way up, which is really one of the funnest things to, to witness is when you watch that, you see them start low and you'll see them just sitting and eating and they'll turn sideways, little really usually pretty soft movements, you know, they're like this and they'll just gradually move up. I'm kind of I'm kind of busted right now. I don't want to stand up and fish that fish above me. 
because if I do this, this what I thought was a pair, it wasn't. The other male just kept moving upstream. This one's sitting here, uh, still nymphing. And so, but like I said, a lot of times you can watch this and you can watch the whole, the whole aquatic process, the whole, you know, aquatic insect process where they start low. This fish is a weed bed above me and he's waiting for anything that floats down, but you can just sit and watch and they'll eventually just work themselves to the top and start eating the adults. We haven't, uh, there's, there's plenty of adults feeding up above here. I have yet to see a bug. I don't, I'm going to put on a betis just to see if one will eat it, but uh, uh, I might put a, I might put a, a drowned spinner on, which is kind of a, it's a bug I did from one of my books, uh, and just see if they'll, it's an in the film thing. It'll just ride in the film. It's, it looks like it could be a dead bug. It could be a, it could be a, a dead bug, it could be a emergent fly, it could be a lot of things. Get some saliva on it and it'll sink it, you know, it won't sink, I just, just a little. And I'm going to treat this CDC wing, I'm going to let its ass sit in the water. I'm not going to treat the whole fly. I'm going to treat just the wing so it sits. I'm hoping that it pierces the water, rides with its hind end kind of hanging down. And that way, because I can see there, there's a few fish with their heads popping up, almost up, not quite. You won't see their heads. You'll just see the, <clears throat> all you're going to see is this, you'll, almost, it looks like a rise form, but it's not. It's just their backs or the top of their heads pushing water up. And you'll frequently see their dorsals and their tails stick up. And that is a complete telltale on your dry fly fishing that their heads are not on top. They are not eating a dry fly. And so when you see a tail or a, fin, a dorsal fin, it should tell you that that fly, you can either wait it out, wait for them to get up to the top if you want, or you can throw an emergent pattern, which I'm going to do, and just see if you can get them to eat it just under the surface. That would be pretty cool if we can get that one because it'll be right on you. I'm going to go for that one first. There's a funky current right there, but I'd like to see one's head up. skated it between the two of them. <laughs> uh, it's got to be you. Right there. Eat it. Oofta, oofta. Uh. Oh shit. Move just as I was gonna. Oh. Touched him. I was actually picking that up to move the cast.
Jesus Christ. Ate it on the first cast. Bad. That's a tiny little fucker. That thing wasn't 10 inches long. Riddle me that, Batman. I have no idea what's happening. There's a funky current right there, but... You're saying they're looking at it. God, had a piece of him too. Damn it. Huh? I had him. I don't know what the f to do. I'm not hitting him too quick. I'm trying to find a f and cripple. My flies are all too big. I think I'm gonna get my ass kicked. He's looking. He's looking. He's not looking. This is great. I love this. Okay, you see it. You see it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Ah. Oh. Look at him. He's looking. He's looking. No. No. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking. No, oh, he's not looking. Got a lot of fish out of this channel. I'm streamers. Oh shit, just as I looked down, I saw that fucker suspended. You see him? Bear tracks. I'm surprised they're still in you around. Oh, did you see that fucking thing just eat? Did you see that rainbow just eat right there? He's looking for me. He's chasing my fucking bug. Unbelievable. Gonna be the dumbest fish on the planet. He definitely would have ate had I not lined him. And oh, I see him. I think I missed that one too. I think that was my bug. Well, that was a pretty good butt kicking for me. I had absolutely everything I'd hoped for just happened other than the catching fish part. We, we got down there, set it up, got exactly where we wanted to be. Bugs started hatching, absolutely perfect. I had five fish eat, two I felt, hooked none of them. No idea what happened, but we got to set up on them. It was a blast. I, I mean, and then the clouds came in. The hatch was pretty much over by the time they came in. It just got kind of cold, and we kept trying and trying, but just couldn't get them to go. They were nymph. They started nymphing again. We could see them, but I didn't want to do that. Just wanted to throw dry, so got my ass kicked, but... It was a blast. It was, an, <laughs> you know, Braden's going, oh, what's going on? I said, I don't know, I'm getting my ass kicked. But it was absolutely what I'd hoped for. The fish, you know, we got to watch it, watch them come from the bottom. They started feeding on top. And, you know, think maybe I had a little bit too big a fly on. My best, the, the one, every fish ate, you know, that ate, ate the same thing, just to compare a spinner. But I think I was a size big. 
I don't know, they, I had a couple of kind of whoosh, take off really quick, you know, feeds that uh, usually means they refused it right at the end. But I had a couple where I had actually, I mean, I'm tight on them and just came unbuttoned. So that's fishing. It was a great two, three hours. We just, I mean, it was beautiful, sunny. Usually they don't hatch that great in the sun. They were just everywhere. Bugs were everywhere, fish were up. Uh, I just failed to complete the mission, but still had a great time. And it was, you know, couldn't ask for more. You know, the weather was perfect. And, and then now it's clouding up and got cold. And of course, Braden's cold and he has to go home now and get some hot chocolate. So we're gonna call it a day. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it.